Welcome to the Be Empowered Podcast with your host, Graham Hopkins. My goal is to help you regain your power by bridging the gap between who you think you are right now and who you really are. In simple language, that is like making your childhood dreams come true. This is for those who want to make an impact in their lives but don't know how to get there. Be ensured. When you know and feel connected to your spiritual mind, you master your work. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the Be Empowered Show. I'm your host, Graham Hopkins. The Be Empowered Show is really a conversation of what it's actually like to feel empowered, to feel connected to your own truth as opposed to feel separate from it. Today, I have an awesome guest. Her name is Jennifer Russell. Now, the Reverend Michael Beckworth of the Secret Fame makes this statement about Jennifer. He says, A moment with Jennifer is like immersing yourself in the inspiration of the best music and the love of a most powerful prayer. So with that recommendation, I'd like to welcome you, Jennifer, to the Be Empowered Show. Oh, thank you, Graham. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I just, uh, I want to uh, start the interview surrounding that word inspiration. And just Mm -hmm. before we came online, Jennifer, I actually looked it up and uh, it's such a meaningful word. I mean, I personally think that it comes from the word spirit, in spirit, Asian, inspiration. But it mm-hmm. means uh, creativity, um, innovation, ingenuity, ingenu- ingenu- how do you say that? Ingenuity. Ingenuity, that's the one I want. Uh, genius, imagination, originality, insight, vision, uh, finesse and flair. And... I brought that up because from the work I've seen of you, it, 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 uh, your work entails all of those words. So I'm just wondering if you can uh, tell us, Jennifer, where this journey started for you. Oh, I'd love to, and I'd love that you brought up the inspiration because um, there is, I think, nothing better in this world than to feel totally inspired to do something and to do it. You know, I mean, a lot of times we get inspiration, but we don't do anything. But to carry it out and to absolutely complete it is, is um, I guess, story of my life. And so, you know, beginning um, the journey of writing music um, is that the is that the question that you'd like me to answer? The beginning of writing music, or maybe you need to fine tune that question a little bit for me because there's a lot sure. of directions I could go with it. Well, you're a, you're a musician, um, and we can talk about that later, but where did, where did this whole journey start for you? What, what you got you on this journey initially? Wow, well, I had a long freedom journey, I would say, before this began. Um, I used to call it rebellious journey, but now I call it a freedom journey. <laughs> <laughs> and I was born and raised, actually, in Ethiopia. Uh, My parents were missionaries and my grandparents were missionaries. And when I came to the state in the mid, in my mid-teens, and I had a huge reaction to everything I'd been taught as a child. I just had a huge reaction. I couldn't even walk into a church for 10 years. I was that much like, you know, this is not for me. And then this longing started happening in my heart like, how do I find a path back home, you know, back home to where I knew that my, my family's path was a good path, but it wasn't quite my path. And so I started exploring and I, um, you know, I found this little place in my neighborhood that was called the uh, Center for Spiritual Living. And it just, it was strange. I felt very, very much at home there, but the languaging was very strange. But I just started to hang out there and come little by little and found that my heart started to melt. And I found 
um, some principles in metaphysics that made a lot of sense to me, kind of opened up a whole new world for me. And at the same time, I was invited to a virtues facilitator workshop. I had no idea why I was there, but I felt the calling to go. And here I was amongst teachers, ministers, Sunday school teachers, and I'm a musician, you know, I'm playing out five nights a week, I'm, you know, I'm living as a musician, and I had the most amazing experience at the end of that um, three-day conference. I heard very clearly a voice within saying, Jennifer, I want you to clear your plate, and I want you to do one thing, and that's write the virtue songs. And I listened, and I did that. And somebody ordered them for their school, so I had to get them done. I remember calling my husband, who is my producer. We had just opened up our studio, and I said, I want to know if you'll come with me on this journey. And thank goodness he said yes. <laughs> so we had to get those songs out, one, one about a week and a half, because there are 52 of them, and they're a whole year curriculum. So that took songwriting from a whole different place for me, like not just sitting under the tree waiting for inspiration, but taking the inspiration daily, saying, okay. And the two virtues that were asked of me was order and self-discipline. And I was like, oh, no, order, I'm not an orderly person. I mean, I've done a pretty good job of my office this morning, so it looks pretty good. <laughs> But the order, when I went in and asked more information about that, it was, no, put, put it first thing in the day. So I'd get up early in the morning and start writing these, these songs. And it was really on this book called The Family Virtues Guide. And I wrote a song for each virtue in that book. And then all these children's songs started coming out of that. I've done a lot of children, about more than 80, 80 children's songs have I written and recorded. And then... I started writing songs about my own spiritual journey. And that's where I'm still writing now and, and recording and, and doing, you know. So the songs that I write are, if I want to learn a spiritual principle, I write a song about it. If I want to really get something in, you know, in my body and I want to know it, I write a song about it. So that's a long answer to your question. <laughs> well, I've, I've, got, I've got a question for you. Because my sister and brother-in-law were missionaries in Ethiopia for many years themselves. And my question is to you, what is it that makes missionary kids rebel? Oh, what a great question. Let me see if I have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, from where I'm standing today, I think because it is such a strong foundation I am so grateful for that foundation. And that foundation was strong enough for me to push against it. And there was part of me that I think it was so divinely planned that I was planted in the family that I am in to really push me further. And that's what I think the rebellion is about. Because, and it's taken me years to really integrate what I learned as a child and what I know now. And it's very precious to me. It's very precious to me because they're, it, I just had to grow beyond. I had to grow beyond. That's the best that I can, I can put it into words. Can you tell us a little bit more about your upbringing in Ethiopia? Because um, I actually did a year uh, flying around Ethiopia in 1984-85, which has probably been the biggest famine that Ethiopia has ever seen. Mm. And uh, it certainly opened my eyes. Um, I'm fortunate enough, I've probably seen more of Ethiopia than most Ethiopians because I've flown just about right. everywhere in Ethiopia. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful country. So tell us a little bit about your uh, upbringing there. Maybe there, we were there at the same time, I don't know. Actually, I was gone before you got there. But um, my upbringing. My grandparents were pioneer missionaries. They trekked in from Egypt, you know, to come to Ethiopia. And 
their stories were amazing. But I was born there because my parents, my father, when he asked my mom to marry him, he said, will you come to Ethiopia with me? So their whole life was focused around Ethiopia. And uh, four of their six children, me being one, were born there in Ethiopia. And I love the simplicity of my life there. I love the simplicity of Ethiopia. And of course, when I was there, it was called the Switzerland of Africa. So it was, it was lush. It was beautiful. We had, you know, good rains. And I remember walking for two hours as a kid, unsupervised, not seeing a soul. You know, just having that freedom of, of uh, I'm so grateful I, I was born and raised there. When I was six, because there was, well, my folks were in Dumbidolo, a, a small town on the east side of Ethiopia, right above Gambela, but on top of the plateau. I, I wonder if it's a different name now. It could be. Um, I went away to school in Addis. So I then was with a whole bunch of other missionary kids, and that's maybe why we all rebelled together. <laughs> Because we were all in a gang, you know, without our parents, and, and uh, you know, that was quite an experience. And I'm grateful for the music that came out of that time of being at that school, because everybody took music lessons. If there was any kind of production, a music production, everybody was in it. So we got a lot of, uh, a chance to do a lot. We got a chance to experience and experiment with a lot of um just us. There was no media. We did not have media. So we had to create our own, which was, you know, now I'm really grateful for that. Well, the well, famine in 1984-85 probably took media to Ethiopia because mm. I actually flew a lot of media around uh, during that year. Yeah. So, um, I think we'll have to exchange names uh, afterwards because your parents would probably know um, my brother-in-law because he was there for like, I think, 20 to 30 years. I mean, a long time. Wow. I'm sure they must know them. Mm. Yeah. My aunt, my aunt Dorothy is there now and she probably would know them as well. She went back in her, old, in her, in her retirement years to serve and I think she's going to stay until she passes because she loves Ethiopia so much and her people and she's she's working with um, especially elderly there and with the AIDS crisis and um, you know I just she's one of my heroes I just think she's amazing. So I'm going to tell you a funny story about when I was flying there um, World Vision had a contract flying um, grain to a remote area uh, right out near the Sudan border and uh, we started flying in there just on a dirt strip these people hadn't seen white man before so wow. when we so when we landed it was so much fun I mean these people are totally unspoiled um, we we took balloons in there and let them go for oh. the kids but you but you'd like this funny story Jennifer because when we pulled up you know how the nose of the aeroplane's painted black where the, the radar dome is? And it's shiny paint, yeah? So the local women would come up and they'd, they'd kind of look at themselves in the, in the mirror. <laughs> so the point is, it's natural for women. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I remember as a kid, because I had really white hair then, very white blonde hair, I was a towhead. And, uh, you know, people would come up and want a piece of my hair. I mean, they were so fascinated with, uh, you know, what this hair was. Um, I'll never forget that. And I was called Jarti, which means old lady. Because <laughs> the only reference they had to white hair was older. You know, when you get older, you get white hair. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, I, I, I know you do some uh, charity work still for Ethiopians. And... Um, can you tell me about your journey, how that has affected your music over the years? You know, I love um, uh, when I do a project is putting something on it to really fill it out for me because I'm always wanting to give back to Ethiopia, especially because it's so dear to my heart. So when I did Worthy, my album Worthy, um, I've always 
just has such a heart for the women in, in Ethiopia that suffer from fistula, which is a, you know, a, a birth, a childbirth injury. And many young girls get married when they're 14, 13, and they're not really ready to have children, and they have children, and they're in remote areas that don't have medical attention. So the Fistula Project of Ethiopia is amazing. And if you ever have a chance to read The Hospital by the River, uh, it's just an, a fascinating story of how these two Swiss doctors came and created this, this whole procedure to help these women. And any women that get to these hospitals are taken care of. They don't have to pay. So, so my Aunt Dorothy started kind of a freedom trail. And we heard in Gambela that there were a, at least 100 women that needed this operation. And so I began raising money through this through my project Worthy to help, we figured $75 American would get a, a woman from Gambela to Matu where they have a new hospital where they would stay for about a month and then they'd be able to come back home. So it was so, I have to tell you the feeling that I get when I'm recording, when I'm in the studio, when I'm singing and working on these songs, knowing that these women were with me and that, you know, and the fire in my belly to, to, I mean, here we are in 2014, and they're still part of our sisterhood that is suffering like that. You know, it just really, that part of the world really gets me, that there's such a division, you know. Some people, I mean, it's so easy to live here in America. And people in Ethiopia are working every day just to get through. And now, of course, everything seems to be connected to my Aunt Dorothy because she, she comes and tells me the stories. She's working with these about 20 street boys that have just, you know, come. they've come to be a family. She goes and sees them about once a week. They meet in a park. and She's kind of like their spiritual encourager, I would say. And they live on the streets, but they have managed to continue their education. So now, many of them are graduated high school finally and ready to go to the next level without without any resources so change the world cd project is what i'm working on right now and this is really to fund these guys get everything they need to succeed in college you know everything everything they would need their food clothing books transportation, whatever they need to have a successful sexual experience so others can follow. Okay. So what what year did you uh, leave Ethiopia? I left in the early 70s. Okay. And I'm going back next year. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Taking my husband and my son, which I've just told them stories, but I really want them to experience it. And I, it's on my bucket list. And I said, you know, we're taking this off the bucket list. It's time to go. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, and we'll spend some time in Tanzania as well. I have family in Tanzania as, as well. My brother and sister-in-law are still there as missionaries too. Excellent. So you've been a uh, spiritual coach for the last 10 years. What, what, what does that mean, spiritual coach? It means that I uh, sit in session with people. In I work in prayer. So... And I also have really been trained in deep listening to hear what's going on underneath the situation. You know, the situation that can change, it can be really distraction, actually. <laughs> but to really get under underneath and to the core of what's happening, what's really going on. And, um, and then just really dealing with it in prayer. Just really working on prayer and, and, and to be that place of deep, unconditional love a place of safety so that people can really empty their cup and really get down to what are those beliefs underneath that aren't true. They aren't true. Most of these beliefs that we carry around, you know, I'm not good enough, you know, I'm not going to, I never get it right. Um, it's almost like a deep mistrust, not only of the divine, but of self. Like, there must be something wrong with me because I'm not getting this. So I love this work. I really love this work. It's deep work. It's not, um, 
you know, let's just tidy up and see you on your way. Sometimes I work with someone for over two years, really, really restructuring, getting down underneath and uh, coming, coming back home. I, what I do, I call it soul care. Mm -hmm. It's really bringing all parts of the soul back home. Excellent. So we, we are um, probably 8,000 miles apart. Does, wow. does this work over this distance? I mean, could you, could you give me some um, spiritual advice that you would give to other people, for instance? I mean... Absolutely. I work on Skype all the time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I do. It works. It works. I mean, you know, it's, it's what a gift that we have to be able to communicate across the globe. And it's opened up my work, you know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not in location only here, you know. We are, we're all connected. Okay, so you're coaching people pretty much all over the world? Yes. Yes, and I have something I'll tell your uh, listeners about. It's called a free clarity session. So um, anybody that's interested in my work is, is absolutely come, able to come and see it for free and experience it. We actually do a session together of just getting clarity about something. And I love clarity because it's a principle of God. You know, yeah. God's never confused. There's no confusion in God. <laughs> so um, I do those on Skype, and they can go to my website, jenniferruthrussell.com, and there's a opportunity there for them to just sign up for one. So is, is that something you could give a demonstration of now? I mean, can you, can you give me an example of how this clarity session would run? Just a real quick example. Oh. I'll give you an idea. We, we spend about 45 minutes, and although we couldn't get it in, into it, into, it's very intimate, so I don't think that we could do it here, mm -hmm. you and I, um, because it would be asking you to really get into some stuff that you might not want to have everybody know. It's very confidential. Okay. So um, start with just some questions to get to know you a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I ask you to set an intention. I love working in intention. Okay. Um, like this is something that I need to have clarity about. Should I take this job or should I stay where I am? Example. Okay. So then we go into prayer about that and then I just basically open myself up to listen and to also feel the guidance of what, you know, if there's a, a, an exercise to do or some questions and then we talk and do this this wonderful thing that I call a session, and then we end in prayer again. Hmm. And then I just spend a little time seeing if there's more work we'd like to do together. The reason I'm uh, asking about this, Jennifer, is I've I've started something called Ponder on This. So if you go to uh, uh, Facebook uh, Be Empowered uh, group, I put uh, probably three times a week. I'm putting Ponder on this, and I'm helping people to uh, slow down and think and ponder at a, at, a, at a higher level than what they'd normally think. And the outcome is clarity. It brings clarity. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. You know, clarity is empowerment. Hmm. You know, when you feel clear about something, it is. I mean, it, you can take it on any area of our life. When you feel clear about your money, when you get feel clear about a relationship, you know, I, I find that coming out of vagueness, you know, vagueness is kind of like a disease. It kind of like just uh, keeps everything in this place of non-commitment, non, you know, just confusion. But making a commitment to yourself to come out of vagueness, mm. It's amazing what can happen to your relationships, to your finances, to your work. It's really valuable. Yeah, clarity. So one of the things we do at um, Be Empowered is um, I take the principles of flight and airflow over a wing. And then I bring that into the body because it's all the same principles. I mean, we're talking about the one creator here so the point is what makes 
uh, an aircraft fly is exactly the same as what makes us um, uh, flow in what we do. And so if that air is not flowing, then we have a loss of clarity. Mm -hmm. But it's the clarity that brings us back into the flow. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the more efficient a wing is, the higher the airflow, and then if we translate that back to us, the higher the clarity, the higher the energy flow in and around our body. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and, and you know, to me, that's what our work is. Our work here is to really release the white noise or, you know, that because I relate it to music. So, you know, releasing the sound that keeps going on in our heads and, you know, and it's mostly our heads. Our heads are, are the smallest little part of ourselves and we let it run the show when really it's a, it's really, you know, through the heart that we get clarity. Excellent. So, so tell us about this man called Michael Gale. Oh, I'd <laughs> love to talk about Michael Gale. <laughs> Michael Gale is uh, my producer and also my husband. He is um, wonderful at bringing the ears of ex years of experience, and also he has that gift of bringing out the very best in. Well, I've seen it in not only music, as he's a great guitar player and a producer. So he re he produces behind the board. He's an engineer producer. And uh, he always is pushing me to do my best, which is, is wonderful. And now actually being married to him, sometimes I have to like step back and go, okay, right now I'm just the artist. I'm going to accept this and I'm not going to let my, you know, my hair get raised because he will push me. <laughs> and I love that about him. Um, and he, nothing ever goes out of our studio without sounding extraordinary. And he also is a natural teacher and love the game of basketball. And uh, he teaches young boys becoming men, ha you know, through basketball. It's a wonderful work that he's doing, just using these simple principles of, you know, shooting the basketball right and, and how to be on a team and how to be your best, even when you've lost the game. I mean, it's just, he's, he's a basketball coach as well. So we've been... We've done a lot of music together. In fact, the two uh, CDs I'm working on right now is um, the 13th and 14th that he's produced for me. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and the name of the upcoming CDs? Yes, yes. I'm putting them under umbrella called Change the World CD Project because we are changing. We're raising money for Ethiopia, and I really believe that there is an urgency that's coming through these songs of you know we we are bringing the light it's time for us to get active and i see that you're doing that and i'm doing that and i see many people doing that and i and i love that um so these songs there's two cds one is called lie down in that grass and it comes from the Rumi poem out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing there is a field I'll meet you there. Lie down in that grass. When a soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. And ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. So lie down in that grass, to me, is being in a state of non-judgment. Absolutely. And so the songs on this are really speaking to that softer part of the divine, which I call the divine feminine, the, the place of non-judgment, the place of nurturing, really letting go. And um, there's one song on there called Beloved I Am, and it's just a love song to that divinity within us. Beloved, you know, I am my beloved, I am presence, the Lord God of my being, you know, it's just a very deep song of, uh, of intimacy in this relationship. <clears throat> soft. Lie down in that grass is soft, it's gentle. And then, 
There is only light is the next CD that is, it's like inspirational groove, you know, it's a dance, it's danceable, but it's really calling us into the light. It's calling, it's about being willing, willing to be the light, to stand and hold the door open for more light to come through and, and to really pull heaven on earth. Um, so those songs are, are delightful. I wrote one song uh, from my favorite lesson in the Course of Miracles, which is called Lesson 68, Love Holds No Grievances. I see you as my friend. I see you, you, you remind me that you are part of me. I see you as my friend. You help me to come to know myself. Love holds no grievances. I let all my sorrows go, which is talking about forgiveness. You know, and when I let go of all my grievances, I will know you are a part of me, and I will know I am perfectly safe. Mm. So that's one of the songs on There's Only Light. So they're powerful songs, they're, and they're part of my journey. You know, I hear something, and I, I love writing to sacred texts. I hear something like the Rumi poem. I'm like, wow, that's a song. And Michael Beckwith, um, my, my minister and mentor, you know, sometimes words just flow out of his mouth that sound to me like scripture, They're like the Song of Solomon just flowing out of his mouth. And, and um, with this breath, which is on One with the One, is a, a song I co-wrote with him, and I actually took almost exactly what he spoke one Sunday morning. Uh, and if you ever see him speak, it's like he just empties out so that this wonderful spirit can just flow through him and speak. Mm -hmm. And so, with this breath, I be wed, my true nature, my, my, my forever, my eternal self. I love that I love uh, Rumi quote. It's one of my favorites because outside of this duality of judgment where there's black and white, right and wrong, there is a field. And that field is what's connecting you and me. Yeah. That's where we started this, uh, this discussion earlier. Yes. I love yeah. that because now um, quantum physics is calling it, it a field. Yeah, and uh, that field we're all connected to. It's just that most people don't perceive that they're connected to it. Yes, and I think we all need to work on our own field. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's what spiritual practice is about. You know, working every day on that field and and being available. Mm. Yeah, so that that we can connect, and I think that's. the field is that I hold for my clients. I feel like it's a space, like it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's a place that, that I hold. I don't really hold it. Grace holds it, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's there and people feel that to become my clients, they, they can back into it. They can, they can, when, when they're building their own field, they can absolutely feel that, that I've got their back in, in a sense. It's not really me that has their back, but this field of conscious awareness that I've really worked on. I've worked on it for years. Mm. Yeah. Jennifer, I want to wind up this uh, wonderful conversation with a question about the brain. You, make, you make a comment uh, on your website uh, where you talk about music makes the brain happy. Yes. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yes. Um, Wow, Paul Sheely is a wonderful facilitator, and I, I took a wonderful course with him, and, and it's all about the different parts of how we learn. And I just grabbed onto this and started doing more research about it. But, you know, the right hemisphere of our brain is really our creative brain, and the left is the more logical, the linear. You know, we, we could think of it, too, as the, as the more feminine, the more masculine. And music brings them together, you know, and singing wakens up every cell in your body. Mm. So when, and I, I used to work in a, a lot of elementary schools taking these songs that I've written 
and I'd always have some time with the teachers uh, because I don't know how it is where you are, but a lot of teachers weren't given that gift of t singing as, as in elementary school. They've taken the arts out of school so much that they didn't sing. So I was helping them get over that fear of singing and of leading their students in song. And so we'd sing, I'd just make them sing. And even if they're monotone, it doesn't matter. But there's something that livens your heart up when you sing. And it does, it brings your brain together and it gets you in that place of ready to learn. You're open and you're ready, you're, you're whole. Basically, you're bringing both parts of your brain together. Mm. Yeah. That's wonderful. So, Jennifer, I'd really like to thank you for um, so, and, they, and they've done a lot of study sessions. Sorry, you're breaking up there, uh, Jennifer. Can you say that again? Um, I'm, I'm just saying if you sing while you're preparing your supper, you're going to have a great supper. <laughs> <laughs> we will. It's, it's almost on the table. Okay, great. <laughs> so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today on this uh, Be Empowered podcast. It's wonderful to have uh, Jennifer Russell along. It's been a wonderful conversation. Um, I'd like to ask the listeners to do us a favour. If you could possibly leave a review on iTunes, if this has... Um, resonated with you in any way and uh, by leaving a, a review that uh, will increase the ratings of uh, our show on iTunes and then we can reach a, a wider audience. If you have any questions uh, about what we've been talking about today uh, you can always uh, catch Jennifer on her website, uh, listen to her music, those links will be uh, on the iTunes uh, website that connects you to uh, to this interview. Or you can uh, go to Amazon and download my book called The Manifesto of Your Inspirational Mind. And just to explain that a little bit, the inspirational mind is that field that we've been talking about today. Or you can go to my website, uh, www.beempoweredgroup.com and download a free ebook called Know Your Own True Value and Worth. And I think, uh, Jennifer, you would agree that that's probably the basis of what we've been talking about today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I do, I do just want to say, too, in case this recording does get off somewhere without any written, uh, that anyone can find me at jenniferruthrussell.com. Excellent. Is, is, is there um, a final bit of advice you'd like to give the listeners before we wind up, Jennifer? Yes, I would. Excellent. Connect to your connect to your higher power every day. <laughs> That's what I would like to say. Or and life will be easier. Can I say every moment of every day? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks so much for listening to the Be Empowered podcast. For more on regaining your power by bridging that gap between who you think you are right now and who you really are go to www.beempoweredgroup.com and enter your name and email address to receive a free ebook and get notified of any upcoming podcasts. Remember, when you know and feel connected to your spiritual mind, you master your world. Changing your energy transforms your life.